In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Melon DS emulator as quickly and easily as possible. I'm also going to be explaining all of the graphics options and showing you what they look like with side-by-side -side examples. The setup for this one is very easy and really doesn't take that long at all. So I'm not going to waste anybody's time and get straight into it. So you need to grab the emulator from the official Melon DS website. I'll put a link for this in the description below. And as you can see, it's available for Linux, Mac OS and Windows. Download it for whichever one that you're using. Now the nice thing with the most recent release, 0.9.5, is that you no longer need to use BIOS files, which makes the setup a hell of a lot easier. Once downloaded, you want to right click on the zip file, go to 7-zip and make sure that you use this Extract To option. Once that's extracted, you want to open up the folder you extracted it to and then just launch the Melon DS EXE. And the first thing we're going to do is go into config, then go into input and hotkeys to configure all of our controls. Down at the bottom with joystick, all of your connected controllers should appear here. So just select the one that you want to map it to. And then it's pretty self-explanatory. Just select the input that you want to map and then press the corresponding button on your controller. Nice and easy. You can use your keyboard as an input device if you want to. Just make sure that you switch to keyboard mappings and then change these to whatever you want them to be. Once you've done that, you want to go over to general hotkeys. Now, some people say that you don't need to map these, but I very much recommend that you do. Some of these you might not need to use, but the most important ones here are pause, resume for the actual emulator itself, reset for convenience, and toggle full screen. Toggle full screen is the most important one here, so make sure that you take a note of what this is set to. You can map these hotkeys to your controller as well if you want to, but I generally don't. Now, once you've got all of this set up exactly how you want it to be, just press OK. Now we're going to go back into config and go into video settings. With the 3D renderers, you've got two choices, software and OpenGL. Software is technically the most accurate, but it will force you to use the original resolution, which is quite tiny. So it really only comes in handy if you're using this on a handheld device with smaller screens and accuracy is of utmost importance, which is why for the most part, I recommend you use OpenGL. With OpenGL, you can increase the internal resolution, which makes these games look a hell of a lot better on larger displays, especially the 3D games. And which resolution you use really comes down to personal preference or your performance. Keep in mind, the higher you set this, the less jaggers you're gonna see on polygons and the sharper you're gonna make the overall image. For me personally, I'll set this around 10X. Now, improved polygon splitting is a fix for games that have problems with quad rendering. And I recommend leaving it off by default and only turning it on for those games that require it. And I'll try to compile a list of those in the description below. Now, for the most part, you are not gonna see any screen tearing with this emulator. But if you do, you can activate VSync here. Now we're all done with this, we can just press OK. And we're gonna go back into config all the way down to screen size. Now this only applies to your window size when you're in windowed mode. And I recommend setting this to 2X so you can actually see the entire window. And at this point, you are good to boot up a game. So just go into file and then go to open ROM. Find the game you wanna play and then just press open. Once you've got your game loaded up, you're more than likely gonna to wanna to know how to get this into full screen mode. And unfortunately, there is no way to start your games immediately in full screen, which is why that full screen hotkey I showed you earlier on is so important. So go ahead and hit that now to actually get into full screen mode. And you can hit it again to come out of full screen. Now for the most part, having one screen on top of the other is correct and what you should be using by default. But if we go back into the config settings, with these options towards the bottom here, we can change the orientation of both of these screens to however we want or need them to be. For example, there are some games that have a vertical orientation. And for those, we can simply rotate both of these screens so they display vertically. But there are a bunch of other options here. We can change the layout, the sizing, and the screen gap if we wanted to. And I fully recommend have a play around with this to find out what you like and what you don't like. There we go, that was my super quick setup guide for Melon DS. Really not that difficult at all. The thing that people do tend to struggle with is that full screen mode, which is kind of hidden with that hotkey function. So just keep that in mind when you're playing around with this emulator. Now, if you found this video helpful, slam me a thumbs up. And if you wanna keep up to date with all of this, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.